Hey guys, Lego Master Nine again, back today with another video. And um, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and break down and explain the entirety of the Arcus V1.0 language. Um, yeah, since um, I haven't really explained how to use it or anything other than showing it in my showcase video of the compiler, and I've been meaning to do this video for a while. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to reference the um, instruction manual <laughs> um, that I created for my language, which is right here, a guy who was bored, redstone computer instruction set specification version 1.0. And this document can be found um, on the repository page of the compiler itself in the download under the documentation. And um, I will be um, explaining or breaking down the version 1.0 of this language using this document and Minecraft as well. And as you can see, I am in the Redstone Computer version 3.0 world right now. And um, this is where I will start breaking down how the language works and how it's built and all of that stuff. I will also be using a couple of these programs that are included in the documentation folder with the compiler downloads to show and explain um, various different components of the language. One thing that is nice about this um, document here that I've created is that I have also included the generated assembly code. So if you guys are curious about the assembly code that is generated behind the scenes, um, it is listed here. And this isn't exactly what the assembly code looks like. This is just what assembly code is generated um, for each function. Additionally, this eventually will be on the wiki page of my repository that um, and hopefully I'll style it and make it nice and everything, but I haven't had enough time to do that and I just want to get this video out to you guys. So without um, any more rambling, let's get started. I did forget to mention each program that you create needs to have this line as the very first line of the program or else the compiler will not, um, it'll refuse to parse um, any text file that it receives. So it looks for this specific um, pound RC compile target uh, line right here. All right, so to begin, I designed this language um, with various different high level languages like C Sharp, C++, Visual Basic, that kind of thing in mind. And um, you can kind of see it in the language itself. So here are a couple of um, demo programs that I have written here that are included in the documentation folder. And um, I guess the first thing to point out is that um, after every line of code, a semicolon is required to end the line of code. And as you can see here, we have semicolons on every single line of code except for um, specific cases like if statements, else statements, um, jump statements, um, and those kinds of things. But in most cases, you will want a semicolon if it's after a function or a declaration. So if we see here, we have a declaration of a variable. And then here we have functions and stuff. All right, so in Arcus version 1.0, there are um, three ways to manipulate variables as is listed up here. The first one is to create a new variable with a certain numerical value. So if we look here, we have an example of that. So we have new number one, uh, num one, that's the name of the variable, then it's set to zero. And that is how you set a variable to a number. And then the next one is that you can change um, the variable to a value so without um, declaring it. So this creates a new variable and you need to um, instantiate a variable before you can modify it. So if we were to um, um, create a new program here using Arcus version 1.0 and we went um, num1 equals 5, this is incorrect. Um, you're going to have to, let's bring this down a little bit, you're going to have to um, instantiate the variable first, so new num1 equals zero, just to instantiate it. And you can also um, have this, um, when it's created, you can have it be assigned a certain value, and then you can modify the variable to whatever you want. All right, and then the last way you can um, manipulate variables is by using functions. So if we see here, we have an example of that. We have an add function here and we are setting the variable value one to the result of value one plus value two. And um, just a quirk of the compiler, and this is documented in the um, documentation here, you need parentheses around this, um, this function here. 
um, especially if you are using multiple functions, you will need uh, multiple parentheses. Okay, so let's say I have I have um, instantiated four new variables here, num1, num2, num3, and num4, and they all have different values. Now, if I would want to um, set num1 to the result of these three numbers here being added together, what I would have to do is that I would have to go like this. I would have to do, um, it kind of works like an onion for now in the compiler. So you would have to start off with num2 plus num3. And this is one function, as you can see here, the addition of two numbers, that's one function. And then plus num4, like that. And then you would end the line of code like that. This is just a quirk of the compiler and thus a quirk of the language. So you will have to follow this um, this onion methodology throughout um, your programs. If you're trying to set a, va a variable to the result of multiple functions, then you're going to have to use this onion method right here. And I am hoping to change this in future versions of the compiler and the language, but um, this was, I guess, the easiest way I could find uh, how to do it for now. All right, so all programming languages have if statements, and Arcus is no exception. So for if statements, um, this is pretty much like C-sharp. So f um, testing for a condition here, we have if, and then the condition in parentheses, and then we would have um, if an if statement, and then your code here, else statement, and then your code here. It's your pretty generic if and else statements. And we also have else if here, so you can do an else if tree. Like for the multiplication program, we have an if statement, and then we have else, an if, an else, if, an else, and then we have nested if and else. So you can just use it um, however you would like. And um, one thing that is unique to Arcus with the um, if statements is the causes keyword. So if we see here, testing for functions that causes condition, use the syntax primarily for checking for shift underflows and overflows that are caused by functions. So what I mean by this is that you can test for shift overflow and underflows in um, at least the version 1.0 of the language. So if we see here in the Redstone Computer 3.0, and this is also present in the Redstone Computer 4.0, we have a shift overflow and a shift underflow. And in this, in the physical hardware, you can, um, one of the conditions you can test for, if we go down to one of the control units here, <clears throat> one of the conditions you can test for is shift overflow and shift underflow. And this is expressed in the language using the causes keyword. And as you can see, I use it right here in the multiplication program. And if you see here, we just have, um, the way this works is that we have our condition or not our condition, our, um, what we're testing. So if the result from this addition operation here causes a shift overflow, so essentially what this means is that when the computer runs this here, this addition operation, and the shift overflow f um, flag is set in the ALU, um, this will detect it. And then when that is detected, it'll run the code that is in the brackets, which in this case is to just exit the program, which I will talk about a little bit later with that function. And this is explained here um, for the causes and then the shift overflow and shift underflow. You can also use um, the regular conditions that you would in any um, program. So the double equals for um, testing two variables are equivalent to each other. And then the greater than and less than signs. And then there's a specific one here for um, inputting a specific port ID. So if we see here, you use this when you want to test if the user has pressed one of the user inputs and then see IO input. So essentially, if we look here, we have a perfect example of that here with the multiplication program. So as you see here, if you have if input zero, and I'll explain this more later, but essentially what that means is that if, if we go up here, if the first input is selected, so if we if you see computer input one, two, three, and four, and that's also present on the Redstone computer 4.0, so you can test for that and then it'll run um, whatever code you want. So now moving on to the functions of the um, Arcus version 1.0 language. Um, for the base language at least, um, all of these are the functions here. We have add, subtract, compare, not, this is a bitwise operation, bit shift right, unsigned, that's another bitwise operation. We have a bit shift left, bitwise operation, um, register flushing, <clears throat> 
and IO output and IO input and computer shutdown and jump. I said and quite a lot of times there. But yeah, most of these um, functions correlate with opcodes in the um, computer. You're starting off with the Redstone computer 3.0. So if we go ahead and go down to the opcode decoder, and if you guys don't really know what I'm talking about, you can go see the Redstone computer 3.0 breakdown for this computer. But um, as you can see here, one of the opcodes is ALU add, and that corresponds to um, the add function. And then we have ALU subtract correlating to the subtract function, and so on and so forth. All right, so to add in uh, the Arcus language, this is pretty self-explanatory. I have shown this a few times already, but the syntax here is um, var1 plus var2. So if we see here, we have like, let's go to the Fibonacci program. We have value one plus value two, and um, writing that result to value one. So essentially this is just, um, adding value two to value one. And you can also do um, a variable plus a static value. So if we wanted to do um, like value one, so if you want to add three to value one, we could do value one, oops, not value, value one equals value one plus three. So this will add three to value one. It's again, pretty self-explanatory, but I thought I'd show it to you guys. And then another one here, this is, um, neat shorthand, um, I added value plus plus. So essentially this just adds one to a variable and you don't have to write out the longhand for it. So if I wanted to um, increment value two here, I could just do go, I could just go value two plus plus, and then that'll add um, one to value two. All right, so the subtract function is basically exactly the same as the, um, uh, the addition function. So it has um, subtracting two variables and then subtracting a value from a variable, so a static value. And then we have um, value minus minus. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna have to update my documentation here because this is incorrect here. Um, so just go ahead and ignore that. But um, this also, this subtract function has, or at least should have the same syntax and functionality as the add function except subtract. All right, so the next function, I guess, is the compare function. Now this isn't really a function, but it's rather um, used in tandem with the if statement. And as you can see, I made that um, comment right there. And you can do different types of comparisons. So you can compare um, two variables greater than or less than here. And then you can compare if two variables are equal to each other. And then you can do the same thing, but with a static value instead of another variable. So if you wanted to see if a variable was equal to zero or not and that kind of thing. So um, we can go ahead and see that here if we look at right here. So if we have num1 equals zero and you have to use the double equals since the single equals is for um, setting variables or setting values to variables and then the double equals is used for comparisons. So you wanna use your comparisons inside the if statement right here. All right, so getting into the bitwise operations here, the first one we have is not, and essentially this will just invert all of the bits for the variable. So if we were to do value one, um, and then two exclamation marks, which um, stands for the not function right here, and this will basically set, um, and let's just flip all the bits. So one, since value one is one, it would be set to 254. All right, so the next bitwise operation we have is bit shift right, and this is unsigned um, right shifting. And essentially to do that, you just have to go value one and then two um, arrows pointing to the right and then a semicolon. And this will, in the ALU, it'll shift all of the bits one bit to the right. And um, <clears throat> conversely, there's also the bit shift left, and this is um, signed and unsigned because it works both ways. Um, and then this um, is just, as you would think, just the same thing, but instead the arrows point to the left. So this will tell the computer to um, shift all, um, all of the bits in this address here one bit over. All right, so some practical cases for bit shifting um, would be multiplying and dividing. So what you can do is that for bit shift right, this essentially multiplies 
whatever number you have by two. So instead of um, adding t um, a number onto itself, you can just shift it right. And this is a lot faster. It's a much cheaper operation for the ALU to perform. And then the bit shift right, or did I say bit shift right? Bit shift left, sorry. Bit shift left multiplies by two, and then bit shift right divides by two. All right, so the next function we're gonna talk about is the register flushing function. And essentially this, um, I guess flush is just another word for delete the value of. Um, and if we see here, we can use, or I guess it's not in any of the programs here, uh, any of my example programs, but this is essentially used to flush any register that is input. And there are three different registers that you can flush, at least um, in version 1.0 of the language. You can flush the core output register, the raw binary display register, or the decimal display register. And the way you would use that is that, let's just say in our program here, you would um, type in flush, and then that should turn like a turquoise, there you go. And then the ID of the register that you wanna flush. So if we wanna flush the raw binary display register, so delete the value of essentially, you would put one and then a semicolon. And then that'll tell the computer to delete whatever value is in this register. And this directly correlates to the flush, let's see here, the reg flush opcode, as you can see here, on the right side computer 3.0, and the right side computer 4.0 also has this flushing um, mechanism, I am pretty sure. All right, so now moving on to the IO functions. Um, we have two functions here and they work hand in hand. We have the IO output function, which essentially is used to output any data outside of the computer or the main um, processing unit, I guess you can say. And then we have IO input, which takes in any data from external sources and um, moves it into the processing unit for processing. So you will go ahead and start with the IO output function. All right, so for the IO output function, there are three different syntaxes you can use. The first one is output and then the port ID and a variable. And essentially this will output whatever value the variable is that you put into the specific port ID. And if we see here, we have the port IDs zero through six, and then we have um, the decimal display, raw binary display, parallel output port, and then the four computer indicators. Mm -hmm. And conversely, you can also output a static number to these um, ports as well. And then that'll obviously, um, that number will be expressed in binary. But let's say you wanted to um, output the number five to your program, you would go output and then port ID. So let's say you wanted to put it on the decimal display, so then you would specify port ID zero. So zero and then five. So this will print five the number five on um, the decimal display of the computer that is hooked up. So when that line of code is run, it, it should pop up, a five should pop up right there. And if we wanted to display the value of a specific variable, um, you would just put the variable in. So example, if I wanted to um, display the value of num3 here, I would just put num3 in like that. All right, so you can only use those two syntaxes for these first three port IDs. Um, and then the last four port IDs and this third syntax are reserved for special case, which is when you wanna turn on a certain computer indicator. And in that case, you just need to specify the port ID and that's it. So if I wanted to turn on <clears throat> computer indicator two right here in this computer, what I would do is that I would specify output. And then if I want to output indicator two, and that, as you can see, that is number four, that's port ID four, and then I put four in like that. And this will um, turn on computer indicator two here on this computer and also on the right side computer 4.0. All right, so now moving on to IO input, um, this is pretty much has a similar um, story to the IO output function and that there are two syntaxes here. The first one, is um, importing, or not importing, sorry, inputting a specific value from a um, port ID and then saving it to a variable. And um, for this syntax, you can use these three um, port IDs right here. So four, five, and six. So then you can save a number from the random number generator, the parallel input port, or the user input panel. 
and essentially what that'll do is that it'll take whatever value that is in that location at that moment and save it to a specific variable. So um, we can see that here in um, the multiplication program where we have a comment here to, to grab the user input. And essentially what this means here, what happens here is that if the user has pressed um, computer indicator one or toggled it, that's what input zero means, which we will go into in, in depth in just a second. And we have input six. And then if we reference our documentation here, six is the user input panel and it will save whatever is in the user input panel to the variable num1. And then the second syntax here for IO input is the port ID underscore user input. And um, you can essentially, this is mainly used in tandem with the if statement. And this basically checks if these user inputs are toggled. And that is what this means right here, as I just explained a second ago. So if input zero, which essentially means if we go back here, if user input one <clears throat> is toggled, so if this switch was flipped right here, you, computer input one on the Reddit Slug Computer 3.0, and then user input one on the <clears throat> Reddit Slug Computer 4.0, um, if that is um, on, and then it will run whatever code is inside these brackets right here, which in this case is grabbing whatever value is in the user input panel and saving it to a variable. All right, so the next function here is pretty self-explanatory. It's just um, shutting down the entire computer and you just call that by typing exit. And we have that right here and right here. And um, all programs should have some sort of exit point or else the program will run forever. Um, so you want a place where the program can um, terminate. And in this case, we have um, exiting here when the multiplication is complete or if a shift overflow is found for the multiplication program. And then for the Fibonacci program, the program exits whenever a shift overflow is detected. And essentially, it does the same thing on the computer as pressing the computer off button. And it'll turn the computer off and execute any settings that you might have for program execution. So like for an example, on the Redstone Computer 3.0, if you don't want the RAM to be reset on shutdown, you just un um, unflip the switch. And then when exit is called here, it essentially just, it's like the program is pressing this off button and it won't um, clear the RAM or UI outputs on shutdown. All right, so the last thing to mention for the Arcus version 1.0 base language is, um, this isn't really a function, but it's more of a feature of the language is jumping. And um, this was put um, so that you can have a little bit of, uh, a little more control flow in your programs because there are no, um, user-defined functions yet in the Arcus language. And I will go more in depth in as to why in later videos. But um, so essentially this command will allow you to jump to a certain defined location in your code. And this is what these, um, this light brown um, sections are. So essentially um, it's like the um, defining region, no, not regions, um, defining locations in C sharp. Um, so what it does is that you can define a location using two pound signs here. So I've defined the location UI one collect right here. And now that that location is defined, I can jump to this location anywhere in the program. So uh, let's see here, as you can see, we have a jump right here, jump to UI one collect. So essentially when this is run, it, the program will jump back up to this label. I think that's what it's called in C sharp labels. Yeah. So it'll jump back up to here and then it'll run here again. So essentially I have a little loop going on here, grabbing the first um, number for this multiplication program. So if we look, um, essentially this checks if the first user input is toggled. If it is, it'll save the number. But if it's not, it'll jump back up to the top. So it'll keep doing a loop until this condition is met. And then, um, yeah, so essentially you can have these locations anywhere in your program and then you can jump to them anywhere in your program as well so that it gives you um, a lot more control over how your program flows. All right, so I have covered um, essentially the entire Arcus version 1.0 base language, but um, Included in Arcus version 1.0 is 
the Redstone Computer version 4.0 extension, which is reduced down to RC40E, is what I like to call it. And I will also go in depth and explain everything about how this works as well. Essentially why this is um, an extension instead of just part of the base language is because the Redstone Computer 3.0 does not have the functions, or at least all of the functions that the Redstone Computer 4.0 has. So, and I wanted all of the computers to be able to um, use all of the code in the base language. And um, yeah, so the Redstone Computer 4.0 has new features that obviously the Redstone Computer 3.0 does not, and that's why I decided to include it in an extension. All right, so for the Redstone Computer version 4.0 extension here, um, I guess what I should talk about first is <clears throat> how to load this extension effectively into your program. So to do that, it is pretty easy. To use um, this RC40E extension, what you're gonna to wanna to do is add the line right below that, import RC40E. And that'll tell the compiler that you want to use the functions and capabilities of the um, Redstone Computer 4.0 in your program. All right, so the Redstone Computer 4.0 has a few main extra features compared to the Redstone Computer 3.0 and those are CPU caching, um, GPU manipulation, or plotter manipulation, and um, you, um, changing the clock speed. So those three things are what essentially is loaded, or that's what, not, uh, that is what, that is what's loaded, excuse me, <laughs> um, when you import this extension here. So for the CPU caching, um, this is essentially um, allows you to have much faster memory or to have a lot faster read um, write times compared to accessing variables from RAM. But this is not implemented in Arcus version 1.0 CPU caching unless you want to program your program manually without using this language. Um, I just didn't have enough time to implement CPU caching in there. <clears throat> but what I did have enough time to implement and I really wanted this to be used was um, using the plotter on here, or the GPU, and I have the Redstone Computer 4.0 world loaded here, loaded here. And I wanted, since this is such a big component of the UI panel, I wanted um, as many programmers as possible to be able to take advantage of it. All right, so with this added um, GPU support, there are four main functions for um, manipulating the screen here. The first one is GPU encode point. And then the second one is GPU reset, and then we have GPU draw point, and then we have GPU erase point. Now starting off with GPU encode point, essentially this function converts two 4-bit numbers into one 8-bit coordinate. And the way this works is that, <clears throat> or at least internally with the hardware here, it takes two 8-bit numbers and it compresses it into um, one 8-bit number. Because on this screen, there are only... Um, 15 points on here. So it's a 15 by 15 screen, which means every single um, coordinate on this screen can be encoded essentially into one 8-bit number. But you can't natively do that um, with two 8-bit numbers. So you're going to have to use the encode function that is provided in the um, uh, RC40E extension, at least if you want to program it in Arcus version 1.0. All right, so there are two different um, syntaxes you can use when um, using GPU encode point. Um, the first one is encoding two variables and then saving it to an output variable. So this will read two locations and then take those two four bit numbers and um, basically compress it into one eight bit number. And the next syntax you can use is um, using one variable and one static value. So you can also do that and then compress it to one uh, eight bit number. And the next GPU function is GPU reset. This one is pretty self-explanatory. This just clears the screen essentially. So if you have any pixels that are set on the screen, it'll wipe all of them and it'll make it look something like this. All right, so now the two most important functions in my opinion for the GPU are GPU draw point and GPU erase point. And now these, um, functions work pretty much almost identically. It's just that they do different things. So the draw point function will obviously draw a point on the screen. And um, the syntax for that, you can have two syntaxes. The first one is giving the GPU draw point function, 
um, an encoded variable. So what I mean by encoded variable is the output variable from this function right here, the GPU encode point function. So once you have this output variable, you feed that variable into this function here, and then it'll draw that specific encoded point. <clears throat> so um, let's say I wanted to do that here. So what I would have to do is that I would have to import RC40 first. And let's say I wanted to <clears throat> draw whatever was in these two values here. So first I would have to create a new um, encoded value equals zero. <clears throat> and then I would have to go GPU encode like that. And then it shows, and then I go value one, value two, and encoded value. So essentially it'll take this first argument as X, the second one as Y, and in this as the variable to um, encode both of these values into. And now once I have that, I can go GPU draw point. And these names are <clears throat> listed here in a documentation right here, GPU draw point and then GPU encode. And then I can put in my encoded value. And then this will tell the computer essentially to encode whatever value is in these two numbers into this variable and then to draw that. And um, the one thing that you do have to keep in mind is that if you want to encode values, um, it'll only take um, up to four bit numbers. So if you have a number higher than 15, so let's say I have 16 here, it won't encode properly because 16 is not a four bit number. All right. And the second syntax you can use for GPU draw point is just drawing a specific point on the screen that aren't variables. So if I wanted to draw the point three comma four, I could go GPU draw point and then three comma four like that. And then that would draw the point three comma four on the screen here. And um, the GPU erase point function works exactly the same as a GPU draw point function, but instead of drawing, it does, you guessed it, erase. So it has the same exact syntax and everything, but it just erases the point instead of drawing it. <laughs> I also forgot, um, not also forgot, I forgot one more in, um, GPU function here, and this is GPU granular control. And essentially this function allows you to take um, essentially bit by um, bit for bit control of the screen and write large amounts of graphical data to the screen every single clock cycle. And this um, function here is what uses this massive 30 bit gray bus right here. And this, as you can see, this huge bus right here, that is what the GPU granular function uses. And I'm pretty sure I've explained that in my Right, so computer 4.0 breakdown video. And if you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. But essentially what this does is that it allows you to um, essentially draw entire lines of the screen at a time. And it's pretty interesting. All right, so the GPU granular control function, or it's noted here as GPU granular update, Essentially, this takes four variables, um, granular data X, granular data Y, and then fill X and fill Y. And essentially, the granular data X is um, <clears throat> the, the data for one row of pixels on the screen, as you can see here. So if I wanted to um, draw a checkerboard, for example, um, like with the checkerboard program, you, um, you would first um, draw a line of ones and zeros. So this pixel would be set, then this pixel would be not set, and then set, not set, set, not set. And um, that you essentially take that data and you put it into <clears throat> this granular data X um, argument here. And um, to reduce these, um, the length of the, I guess the argument and to make it more clean, um, I have implemented hexadecimal for these two arguments. Now hexadecimal is an argument um, type I think in Arcus version 1.0, but I would recommend only using it for granular data X and granular data Y. So as you can see here, I have an example. So essentially you would just take your binary um, row of pixels to set, you would put it into a binary to hexadecimal converter online or whatever. And then like, see, this is the result that's generated. You would take this and put this as your first argument. All right, so for the granular data Y here, this essentially controls which um, um, I guess Y values to update this granular data X onto. 
So let's say I have this granular um, X data and I wanted to put that on the first Y value of the screen, which is Y, Y1 at the bottom here, and then Y15, which is way up here. So you can essentially specify that here by putting um, one and then a one at the end. And that'll essentially update the screen with this data on those two Y values. So you can see how powerful um, this GPU granular system really is because you can send um, essentially entire rows of pixels and then have that update on multiple Y values of the screen. And that is essentially what I do with the checkerboard program and how it is able to <clears throat> um, finish within two or three cycles because it draws a one and then a zero and then a one and then a zero all the way down for the first row and then it updates that for every other Y value. So it'll update that on Y value one, three, five, seven, all the way up to the top. And then the next instruction essentially what happens is that it um, does the opposite, it inverts those bits. So then if this was a one on the um, first Y value and this would be a zero and then a one is zero, one, zero, one. And then it would update that on every other Y value that wasn't already updated. And that is how that is able to work so quickly. All right, my apologies if that was a little um, convoluted. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to note that for the binary here, we run out the binary. This is these are 15 digits here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. So one bit for every single pixel on the screen here. All right. So the last two arguments here are fill X and fill Y. And these are essentially um, Boolean values. So true or false. But um, a true is a one and then a false is a zero and because I don't have Boolean um, types in Arcus version 1.0. And essentially what fill X and fill Y do is that it um, fills in that data for um, from the first point to the last point. And what I mean by that is if I had this pixel set right here and then this pixel set way over here, and I set the fill X bit, it would fill everything in between those two points. So you don't have to specify um, more data than you have to. And the fill Y also does the same thing, but instead of with the rows, it um, does that by Y value. So if I had um, Y value one set and Y value, I guess 15 set, and I did fill Y, it would basically select every single Y value in between those two points. That's all the Y values. And I go into more detail on how this um, works in my Red Circuit Computer 4.0 breakdown video, but that is essentially the gist of it. All right, so the way you would use this in your program is that um, you would first need to import your RC4DE and then you would call GPU granular update. And then you would just provide the arguments that are given in this um, description here on the specification page. So for an example, um, I would give these two hexadecimal values just as an example. And this specifies the raw binary data. And then I don't want fill X or fill Y, so I'd put zero, zero. And that is essentially all there is to it. And then the computer here, or at least the rest of the computer 4.0 will utilize this massive gray bus and push out all of that data that you gave right there. All right, now the last component of the um, Red Sea Computer 4.0 extension that I wanted to mention was the clock change function, or rather update speed function that it's given here. And this one is pretty self-explanatory as well, but in the Red Sea Computer 4.0, I added the functionality to um, for the programs to change the speed of the core that it is running on. So, um, and a great use for that would be if you um, knew that you were running more um, processor intensive commands on the um, computer that would take longer to execute and you could update the speed of the core and slow it down and speed it up once um, there are lines of code that could be executed faster then you'd have a faster running time or not a, yeah faster running time and um, essentially all you do is just call rc40e update speed and then you give the speed id which is given right here 30 ticks 40 50 60 all the way up to 100 and that'll um, go ahead and update the speed of the core that it is running on all right guys so that is essentially everything in the arcus version 1.0 language that um, 
there is to uh, that's everything that the Arcus version of a language has to offer and I've broken down basically every single component of it and most of it or like all of it is in this document here so if you guys have any questions from what I um, just explained or mentioned in this video you can go ahead and reference this document it is in the documentation folder with the compiler download and if you guys are confused on anything I have a uh, myriad of programs in the documentation folder itself so as you can see we have some programs right here that you can see and these all should compile properly if they are um, um, Arcus programs and that is signified by this um, pound RC compile target um, line at the top of each program since I know there are a couple of text files in here that are just I guess junk files essentially that I forgot to remove which I probably will soon but yeah, most of these programs should work. And if you guys have any questions about how any of that works or anything in this language works, at least for version 1.0, um, feel free to leave a comment in the uh, description of this video. And yeah, that's it, guys. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.